everyone. My name is Akia. Um, oh, the microphone. Okay, <laughs> going after Sylvan. Um, <laughs> um, my name is Akia, and I'm a third year um, PhD student in the LADAM group. Today, I'm going to be presenting part of my PhD project, which is um, the development of a lateral flow assay to predict um, which women are going to give birth preterm. Um, so preterm birth is a birth before the 37th week of pregnancy. There are about 15 million um, preterm births per year, and it occurs in one in 10 births. And it's the leading cause of death in children under five, um, about 1 million deaths per year. So more than 75% of those preterm births could have been prevented with currently available treatments. But um, as the WHO states, it's really hard to know which women are going to give birth preterm and which are not, because 50% of preterm births happen to women who have no identifiable risk factors. Um, currently available screening tools uh, are cervical length measurement because the cervix becomes shorter, closer to birth, or biomarker-based tests, but these are not recommended generally by the NICE guidelines. Um, Disadvantages of these are the cost, the fact that they predict only imminent birth, so that's within a few days to one to two weeks maximum, and they're also not compatible with population-wide screening. Um, Micronase, on the other hand, have recently emerged as promising biomarkers for preterm birth, and these have been found by the Terzido group to be circulating in blood and dysregulated in women who go on to deliver preterm. So they can be, some of them are upregulated, some of them are downregulated, and this difference can be detected from the 12th week of pregnancy. So quite early on. Um, Micronate, so Micronate 150 is the one that I'm mainly going to be focusing on today. So this one is an upregulated Micronate in women who go on to give birth early um, from the 12th week of pregnancy. And the area under the rock curve for this biomarker is 0.87. And it also increases in healthy pregnancies towards the end of the pregnancy as well by about sixfold, which is approximately the same as the full difference in the women who give birth preterm. And it's also been linked to the uh, immunogenic pathway, which is um, the pathway that essentially brings about parturition. So it um, regulates NF kappa B. So our proposed solution is to use a single drop of blood from um, the patient, so maternal blood, which is also where the micronase were found, um, and then to have a lateral flow assay. So these are similar to the very commonly used now COVID tests um, to um, have a also simple readout so that we can move more towards a point of care diagnostic device to screen women who are at risk of preterm birth. This would allow them to have a larger window for treatment, but also um, to allow for further testing. So there's a cervical length measurement, which is not currently done. So in terms of sensing, um, we use a method called oligonucleotide templated reactions or OTRs. And what that means is that essentially with the microRNA of interest, here I have microRNA 150, for example, we develop two peptide nucleic acids, which are complementary, and we functionalize them with two groups that are towards the middle of the microRNA, so that when they come together, they can, um, the two groups can react with each other and lead to a fluorescent reaction in the case of my project, but other people in the group are also developing electrochemical methods. So I detect this as um, a fluorescent change. More specifically, I use a coumarin probe that reacts with thiol, so the coumarin is quenched, so it doesn't fluoresce. And then when the two probes come together, the thiol unquenches the coumarin, so then I have a fluorescent reaction on my, on my lateral fluoresce. And how that is translated onto the lateral fluoresce is that my PNA with thiol also contains a biotin on the other end. So when I pre-incubate this with polystriptavidin, um, I can then print it directly onto the lateral fluoresce. So that is my immobilized probe. Um, and then the PNA with the coumarin can be printed just under the sample loading pad, which is the um, white pad there. 
because that helps the direction of flow this way into the absorbance pad. Um, then when the microRNA of interest is added, this binds onto the binds onto the PNA coumarin um, and then flows down the lateral flow assay to be captured by the other PNA. So essentially I have a localized fluorescent reaction on my test line. Um, so previously in the LADAM group, um, these lateral flow assays were developed where they were commercially available and had a uh, polystriptavidin test line which was pre-incubated with the uh, PNA biotin thiol. And as you can see there in this fluorescent image, uh, fluorescence image, there is a difference between the one containing microRNA and the one not containing microRNA. So now we're trying to move more towards a benchtop scanner. Um, so the results look more similar to this right now where the lateral flow assays are scanned as lines across them. And you can see the peaks corresponding to the fluorescent test lines. And the, also the area under the peak, so the integrals are um, proportional to the amount of microRNA present. And um, following different testing with uh, microRNA containing solutions, this was tested in clinical samples. So this is from total RNA extracted from my, five microliters of maternal plasma from uh, the 12th week of pregnancy in women who subsequently gave birth term or preterm. And as you can see, the upregulation in the microRNA can be detected. So following this, we wanted to see whether we can detect um, the microRNAs as using the method that I mentioned previously with uh, the in-house made lateral flow assays where, where we can print the probes directly on the lateral flow assay, if we can detect the microRNAs directly from plasma because with that way we had a lower limit of detection than previously. So the answer was yes, we can detect the difference between term samples and preterm samples with an area under the curve of 0 0.69. However, um, microRNAs are not generally found freely circulating. They're either within extracellular vesicles or bound onto our proteins. So how are we detecting this difference? Um, and then we came up with the tween hypothesis, which is one of the surfactants that we use for our washing buffers. Um, so using one clinical sample, which means that we have the same amount of microRNA, we tested different tween concentrations to see which one would be optimal, but also to see whether, yes, this is causing the effect that we were seeing before. So it does seem that the tween was um, causing this effect, and it has been shown before that it can break down extracellular vesicles. So we decided to stick with 1% tween for our next experiments. And we also showed that it has an effect on extracted exosomes from plasma samples using DLS. So there is a decrease in the size of the exosomes with different amounts of tween. So following this, we wanted to see whether we can extract more microRNA um, using an autom automated sample processing method. So to do this, we decided to go for a cellulose hydrogel sample pad. So um, hydrogels are biocompatible. They would allow us to add the clinical sample without any clotting. And they can also allow for size exclusion because you can tailor them to have a specific pore size. Um, they can also allow for in situ denaturation. So to release the microRNAs from both proteins and extracellular vesicles. Um, and this can be done by incorporating a um, denaturant into the hydrogel. So the denaturant we decided to use is um, a stas in this case. So this can be added into the hydrogel before it's cross-linked. And then that can be added onto the sample pad and cross-linked onto the sample pad. So as you can see here, um, There we go, okay. As you can see here, this is the plain cellular sample pad. Um, so you can see the fibers here, and then this is it with adding the hydrogel, which forms kind of a mesh structure between the fibers. And then to check that the SDS remains within the hydrogel after cross-linking it and freeze drying, um, these are some SDS image, some SEM images. 
showing the SDS crystals there, which were also confirmed using EDX, so elemental analysis to show that there's the sulfur peak in, um, in the pointed by the black arrow to show that the SDS is indeed there. So we wanted to see the, the effect of the different concentrations of SDS on proteins and exosomes to kind of see how we can tailor our lateral flow assay for this use. And essentially here um, we're using BSA and ANS, which is a fluorescent, pro, uh, fluorescent tag. So the BSA is kind of our protein model. And essentially um, the higher the, the fluorescence detected means that the more ANS is bound onto the BSA, the more we denature it, the fluorescence drops. So as you can see, um, around two millimolar of SDS, we have the lowest um, fluorescence, which means that's around optimal for in-solution denaturation. And then we replicated this in hydrogels with a slightly, diff a slightly higher SDS concentration being optimal. And then um, the effect of SDS was also uh, checked for on the size of the exosomes as before from extracted plasma samples to see how that would affect them. And there's a decrease in their size as well. And for the proteins, we um, confirmed this with uh, circular dichroism as well. Um, so then we went on to incorporate it onto the um, sample loading pads. And as you can see, the best concentration was 10 millimolar of SDS because that gave a significant difference to using the plain sample pads. And this is using one clinical sample. So again, we're detecting this, the, the samples have the same amount of microRNA. And then, so using the same clinical samples as before, so five uh, from women who gave birth at term and five from women who gave birth preterm, we were able to detect the difference with a higher significance in this case and an improved area under the curve of 0 0.97. So in conclusion, microRNA is, detect is possible directly from as little as three microliters of plasma, which is how much we were using in this test. And this novel biomaterial allows for automated and on-chip microRNA extraction. Um, and it's capable of predicting the true outcome of pregnancy at a very early stage. So that's between the 12th to 14th week of pregnancy, which is when the samples we were using were collected. So yeah, thank you very much for listening and a special thanks to my supervisors. <laughs>